everyone. Welcome back to this new episode of our Student Spotlight series, where we are able to showcase some of the work our past students have done. Um, I'm Charlotte. I'm one of the outreach coordinators here at CCIR, and it's our pleasure today to have Audrey with us, who did one of our Future Scholars Program courses. Um, so firstly, Audrey, can you just introduce yourself? So tell us where you're from, um, what year you are in school, and then which course you took. Um, hi, my name is Audrey. I'm from Australia. I'm currently a senior in high school, so I graduate in November. I took uh, the 13-week research course in labor economics, so migration policy and uh, human capital. Um, yeah, I think I did the spring, the spring research program, I think so. Yes. Right. Um, and then can you tell us, just give us kind of a general synopsis on what the course was about and what you looked into? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so uh, in the earlier couple of sessions in the course, we explored some basic, well, uh, well it's not basic, it's um, pretty complex economic um, theory in labor economics, because labor economics is quite a, a niche field, I believe. Um, and so it was uh, quite important for us to be have pretty grounded knowledge. Um, so we looked at uh, labor supply, um, labor market equilibrium, um, elasticity, and um, like the impact of the substitution and income effect on, um, on workers' reservation wages. And for the rest of the course, we mainly looked at um, immigrant workers' economic outcomes and performance in the US labor market. Um, so that was the general direction that our professor took the course in. Um, uh, because I think uh, migration policy itself carries quite a heavy political connotation, especially we see with the recent um, presidential debate, and I believe the upcoming one too, it, it is quite a heavily discussed, um, I suppose, category or topic, um, which is why I, uh, I, I initially um, chose the course um, because one, I had like pretty much no experience in studying labor economics, but also I think there is um, quite a widespread negative perception towards migration um, that, you know, it'll steal the local workers' jobs, uh, which um, is absolutely uh, not true um, with the case. So in my research, I studied um, the economic assimilation of Mexican immigrants and the U.S. labor market. Um, so I picked this research topic um, because I think the mobilization of Mexican immigrants into the U.S. labor market, it, it's not just something of like political, geopolitical significance, um, but also like um, given the very large amounts of Mexican immigrants in the U.S. labor market, their economic outcomes do have very significant implications um, for the U.S. labor market um, in general. Um I, I can like talk a little bit about my um, research project if like that lends itself to it. Yes. Um, yeah. So, project. go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, so my research topic was um, I examined the economic assimilation of Mexican immigrants in the U.S. labor market from like 1970 to 2022, which is when the database goes up to. Um, uh, so. Um, Similar to a lot of like very um, well-established and concrete existing literature, um, in my research, I defined economic assimilation as like wage growth and the rate of wage convergence of Mexican immigrants relative to native US workers. Um, so for example, a successful assimilation outcome would be if um, the Mexican immigrant is experiencing very rapid wage growth and the wage gap between them and the and the um, native U.S. worker um, closes, or if they overtake um, the native U.S. worker, and um, and I titled my research paper "Mexican Dreams: American Realities" um, with a reference to the American Dream. Um, I think with uh, Mexican immigrants, um, a, a majority of them are negatively selected. Um, in migration. So in other words, it's um, they generally have lower skill levels and they're looking for higher return on skills in the US labor market away from home. So seeking better financial opportunities or looking to support family uh, in, in um, better economic conditions. 
and it, I think it all ties back to the American the American dream. A lot of people go to the U.S. with uh, with the intention of um, seeking better career opportunities. Um, and I'm sure that's the case with a lot of immigrants, uh, not just um, the Mexican um, group, uh, but my research finds that um, the American dream and prosperity itself is uh, very elusive and it's, it's, um, it's actually uh, far from the true reality that Mexican immigrants are experiencing. Um, so in my research, I found that um, more recent arrival cohorts are actually experiencing lower and lower entry wages. Um, and their rate of wage growth is actually slowing. Um, so we see that the earlier cohorts in 1970 um, actually showed signs of successful assimilation or socioeconomic integration into the US labor market. But um, more recently, even up to 2022, um, we, we see that uh, they are experiencing some major challenges in assimilating into the US labor market. And uh, I think part of my research in extending the time frame up to like 2022 is that because a lot of the existing uh, existing research on Mexican immigrants in like earlier time periods, like 1950 up to 1990s, it already shows like a downwards trend um, on economic outcomes. And I wanted to see that, uh, I wanted to see whether that trend uh, continues into the 21st century. And um, it unfortunately does. And I think through my research paper, it not only like, gave me such a new perspective on a group of um, individuals that I would have never uh, really thought to study, but I think it also raises um, some um, alarm about um, current integration policies um, in place. Because I think it, it's not just um we should the integration of immigrants isn't just important um for economic purposes um of the US labor market i think there's also an aspect of like morality to it if you um uh, if you know what i mean i end my research paper um in my conclusion i say uh ultimately realizing and addressing this issue isn't a matter of just public policy but it's also a step towards fulfilling the promise of the American dream for all those who seek it. Um, and so I hope that um, my research paper um, will fit into, I guess, the puzzle is a piece of a puzzle of a much larger mass of research of a lot more qualified researchers, but I hope that it would fit into um, this puzzle, this, this um, accumulating mass of research that uh, will really push policymakers to to address um, this very um, very pressing issue um, of the successful integration of immigrants. I think that's a great summary of your paper and and the importance of it. It is such an important topic, and you know immigrants can be um, such a vulnerable group as well. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, so I'm just looking through all, usually I ask a few questions, but you kind of touched on everything. Um, <laughs> I'm just curious with your data, was it a U.S. governmental database that you used to find the wages? Um, yes, it was the American Census um, Survey. Okay, um, okay. So yes. Okay. Um, and then did you, when you were going into this topic, um, obviously you're from Australia, so not a huge, um, not a lot of experience with, with this topic. Yeah. Um, was there anything that you were maybe expecting to find that you didn't see or anything that was kind of surprising to you? Mm -hmm. um, I think going into this topic of labor economics, which is fairly new, I hadn't like had a lot of expectations. I think the like very initial expectation that I had was that um, when people choose to move to a new country seeking better financial opportunities, um, they would stay in that country because these opportunities are like are better. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. I expected the integration outcomes to be quite positive um, because otherwise like, um, why would you stay? Um, obviously return rates of immigrants is also a very topical issue that my pa paper didn't touch on, um, but it was quite surprising. And I, I guess like unfortunate to find that, I guess, um, even though I guess financial labor market outcomes are slightly better in the U.S. compared to conditions in Mexico, it, there is still this um, huge um, wage gap, and um, 
gap and disparity and opportunity um, that really poses a really big challenge to these Mexican immigrants who are seeking, uh, I guess, to fulfill the American dream. So that was um, quite surprising, yeah. Great. Um, and now we're going to shift just to talk about your general experience with CCIR. So firstly, I know you said you didn't have any prior experience with labor economics. Had you had any experience with other subjects or economics kind of as a a, a more general um, field prior to CCIR? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I've written, I like um, not research papers, but quite a few academic essays for um um, competitions like, like John Locke or the Harvard International Econ Competition on the topics of uh, what was it <laughs> on the topics of like population economics and development economics which are like I guess more common and popular fields of of econ so I was quite familiar with the subject but I was definitely looking for that depth that CCIR and um, my professor and TA really offered um, through this course in labor economics and I think labor economics itself is is very, very interesting, is very challenging, um, but definitely something that I would like to further explore, um, maybe in college. Great. And it's great that you were able to get that experience with the subject before you go off and kind of have to make those bigger decisions in uni. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so for those watching, just as a reminder, the Future Scholars program is our group course. So we cap each course at five students. So can you just tell us what your experience was like working with the other students in your course? Mm -hmm. Definitely. We had quite a small class. I don't think it was like, it, it was five, um, I think, but it was definitely a very small class. And um, I think um, because uh, our professor facilitated the research project in a way where he encouraged us to explore like different ethnic or racial immigrant immigrant groups. Um, so we didn't have any like topic overlap, um, which I thought was also like very insightful because um, and so some of my peers uh, looked at Asian immigrants and others, um, uh, yeah, Asian immigrants, some others looked at uh, movement from European immigrants. Um, and so it, it was great for the final presentations. And um, when our professor and TA gave us um, like feedback um, during class and TA sessions, it was really, um, really good to hear about the insights from um, their research because our like by the nature of our research topics, uh, we expect like, quite different research outcomes and findings. And so it was great that like, um, whilst I like got a super like um deep understanding of the status of Mexican immigrants, I was also able to gain um some pretty insightful perspectives on this like a whole array of um different um immigrant profile groups from my peers. Great. Um and then again for the audience, um one thing that we really like to emphasizes the aspect of mentorship in our programs as opposed to the traditional teacher where our mentors don't just transfer information onto you as a student but really guide you through your own discoveries and learning process. Can you tell me what your experience was with your mentor and with your TA as well um, as you moved through the first teaching half of the course into the latter research oriented half of the course and how they helped guide you through that? Yeah. Um, because of how like rigorous the course was, um, my professor and TA, their support was like really, really, really important. I don't think I would have like um, been able to complete a full draft of my research paper if they weren't as supportive. I think in the first half, um, uh, the teaching content, um, our professor did a very good job of like delivering um, the content interactively and assigning assignments that really like consolidated this knowledge. And um, our TA would um, uh, come in and um, she would go through the assignments and then also like reinforce those concepts again. And because um, our econ course was uh, required quite like quantitative analysis, this was like during the middle part of the 13 weeks, our TA really like she taught us how to code using like um data and how to process our data and um um providing like example sample codes and editing our codes to make sure that it ran um and, and so did our professor he also helped in that and um so i definitely like learned a very very useful skill and i would not have been able to do that if our ta um wasn't there or if our professor 
um, hadn't put so much um, time and effort in delivering the content and ensuring that uh, we were like actually digesting it. Um, towards the second part of the research, um, it was very much like independent work, but they definitely um, supported you and provided some very critical feedback. It wasn't like we were spoon fed anything. You really, our professor really encouraged like independent and critical um, thinking. And uh, he would point out like logistical flaws or um, any, any, any flaws in the data that just looked blatantly wrong which did happen a few times um, in my code. And I've had to revise my code quite a few times. Um, and so, yeah, my team was really, really nice and helpful. And she always like, replied to her emails really quickly, which, which was like really impressive. Um, and yeah, towards like um, the end, I just received my evaluation report um, for my research paper from my professor. And um, in like editing and refining that first draft of my research paper, both my professor and TA definitely played a very critical role. And I'm very grateful that I was able to receive that level of um, mentorship at such a rigorous and sophisticated program like this. That's great. Um, and then just one more question for you. What would you say to someone who asked you what the value of doing a project or a program like this is, especially for a high school student? Yeah, I think the first like obvious question that pops to mind is that um, research is very, very good, um, very beneficial to have um, on any application profile. I think it really demonstrates your academic potential and ability to dedicate time and effort to a long term project like this. And uh, I suppose on a like more holistic uh, from another perspective, um, because I was really interested in economics, but because there were so many niches, I really wanted this opportunity to re to explore something in so much depth. Like I really enjoy the feeling of going in knowing like pretty much absolutely nothing and coming out, being able to like uh, engage in a very articulate conversation with my professor or TA. I think that like process of personal growth and like accumulation of skills is really tangible in a research project and research progress like this and I think that's one of like I guess the biggest um, benefits and advantages in uh, participating in, in any research program but particularly CCIR. I think that's a great takeaway. Um, so thank you so much for chatting to me and congratulations again on your nomination to our Spotlight series. Thank you.